Hi guys, it's Amy with Aim to Plan, and I am back with my planner therapy series on positive psychology. Today, we're going to be picking one of the 24 character strengths and talking all about it. So you probably saw from the title, but today we're going to be discussing prudence. Um, now, just so you know, prudence on my via character strengths survey um, is number 20. So it's actually like almost at the very end, the very bottom of my list. Um, and so I wanted to challenge myself to talk about prudence just because it is not one of my signature strengths. And I feel like it's something that learning about it um, and recognizing how it could be a signature strength or a character strength for other people uh, will make me just a better person. Um, and so I wanted to start off with something that was lower for me personally. Um, but it could be that prudence is one of your top strengths, one of your signature strengths. Um, if it is, let me know in the comments so that way I can cheer you on. Um, and if you have any tips for prudence, please do feel free to add them. Um, I am going to today present a definition of prudence um, and talk to you about two uh, like specific interventions that I kind of thought of as potential tools for kind of tracking prudence. Um, and we'll just see how this goes. Okay, so let's start off with a definition of prudence. Uh, I'm going to include a screenshot here that is straight from the Via Character Strengths um, website, viacharacter.org. Um, and uh, by the way, if you haven't taken the Via Character Strengths um, and you don't know what your character strengths are or what your signature strengths are, I encourage you to watch some of my previous videos. I will link the playlist in the description so you can follow along with the series. Uh, but prudence, as defined by the profile results, um, at least on mine, um, says that prudence is being careful about one's choices, not taking undue risks, not saying or doing things that might later be regretted. Um, and then on the website, um, there's a longer definition of prudence. It says that prudence means being careful about your choices, stopping and thinking before acting. It is a strength of restraint. When you are prudent, you are not taking unnecessary risks and not saying or doing things that you might later regret. If you are high in prudence, you're able to consider the long-term consequences of your actions. Prudence is a form of practical reasoning, the ability to examine the potential consequences of your actions objectively and to control yourself based on that examination. Prudence involves far-sighted planning as well as short-term goal-directed planning. It is often referred to as cautious wisdom, practical wisdom, and practical reason. Now, one of the things about uh, prudence is that it falls within the virtue category of temperance, which is one of the six virtues that the 24 character strengths are classified into. And so the, the virtue of temperance is really all about like internalized, like personal control of self. Um, and I think prudence is just, again, it's a lower strength of mind, but I think prudence and temperance, the virtue is really important to foster, um, especially for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of prudence, um, but also just in general, being able to exercise caution is always a good thing. Plus I do consider myself a planner. So that obviously uh, is a component of prudence, but um, planning in and of itself doesn't really do me any good if I'm not reflecting on it. Um, and so one of the first things that I will encourage you to do is, especially if prudence is one of your top strengths, is to really give yourself credit for that. Um, I, again, am not a prudent person. Um, and I really make maybe not rash choices, but I make choices in the moment that maybe aren't as good for me as other decisions. I um, mean, so if you are a prudent person, instead of making that a negative, make it a positive for yourself. And so what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to present two interventions. Uh, these are ones that I've kind of adapted for planner purposes um, from some stuff that I've read in terms of positive psychology interventions for prudence. And so I'm going to talk about intervention number one right here, which is this daily sheet that you've been looking at for like forever. But what we're going to be do doing um, is putting together a daily sheet. One of the things um, that the Via Character Strains website talks about um, is the idea that, you know, someone who has prudence really has like the natural skill set of planning. Um, and so they're able to plan really well. And again, if your character strength is prudence, give yourself credit for that. You are a planner. You are a natural planner, in fact, unlike me who has to like kind of work at planning, you have the natural ability to, to keep track of the things that are going on in your life um, and making sure that you are taking care of business in a way that won't hurt you and your family members, right? Like they're gonna make, you know, smart decisions, prudent decisions. Um, and so, you know, just give yourself, again, give yourself credit for that. Um, one of the interventions that's talked about 
in on the Be A Character Strengths website um, is the idea of doing hourly logs. Now, I personally um, love doing hourly tracking, but the purpose of hourly tracking um, is really just to be able to make note of how you are prudent in the day. At least in my mind, I think that's why it's important. I mean, so for this daily log that you're going to be creating, I think the goal really is not just to track just for the sake of tracking, which is kind of what I do when I track. It's more so tracking so that way you can be aware and acknowledge all the smart decisions, the prudent decisions that you've made in a day. So here I have gone ahead and decorated a little bit, um, but what we're going to do is kind of run through an example schedule. Um, one of the things that uh, you will see is I'm just kind of writing out what like a typical day would look like for me, um, but I definitely love using the hourly layout for this uh, intervention just because you can track it every 30 minutes or every hour and I think that's one of the benefits of being a prudent person is recognizing that you're using your time wisely so what you're going to do is go through and document what you're doing you know just take a moment at the beginning of every hour just to go through and document what happened in the past hour um, and obviously you can use this sheet for your daily to to do's um, and the top priorities that you have I covered up those sections with washi but you can obviously use th those sections as needed too. So again, I'm going to go through and fill this out with my daily schedule. One of the benefits of being a prudent person is being able to develop a routine for yourself. And so one of the things that I would recommend is making a list every single day of what you've done every single day um, and just kind of tracking it, not planning it out per se, but just going back and thinking about what you have done in the previous hour. Like I said, if you are here at nine um, and want to look back at what you did in the eight o'clock hour or at one o'clock, go back and think about what you did in the 12 o'clock hour. Um, I think that is beneficial for you as a prudent person um, or just to develop and foster the character strength of prudence because one of the things that we'll be able to do across time is track whether you're able to stay on schedule, whether you're able to regulate yourself and be temperate and prudent enough to follow your own routines. So the intervention here is to track daily, but also as an addendum to this, uh, really one of the things that you should do is have a pretty set routine. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being a person of routines. Um, in fact, I highly encourage that. Um, and so we can see that happening by putting together a an ideal routine. Um, and so if you're able to put together an ideal routine, you can compare that ideal routine to your daily routine just to make sure that you're mapping it on um, and following your own guidance um, from the past. So that is tip number one, track down everything that you're doing, follow the routine that you've set up for yourself, give yourself room to be flexible, but really um, keep in mind that one of the strengths that you have is to follow the schedule. Now, the second intervention that we're going to talk about um, is something that I just think would be very helpful for someone who has a character strength of prudence. In fact, everyone has the character strength of prudence, but has a signature strength of prudence um, is to be able to track all the different decisions, minor or major, that they are uh, kind of like putting on pause so that way they can think about it. Um, and so what I have here is just some stickers uh, that I put onto a silicone release paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and link this paper, um, but I also will tell you that this paper is super slick. And so the stickers you can see here are kind of falling off. Um, that may be a good thing in terms of like this actual intervention, or it could be a bad thing where it's just really annoying to you. Um, it's kind of bothersome to me, but you know, it also is, you know, for demonstration purposes, I feel like I, it would work, but like these, Stickers are just popping up and that just is annoying to me. Um, but for this intervention, um, this is really for major decisions, more so than minor decisions, um, but definitely for major decisions. One of the things that a prudent people really like to do is to sit and think about decisions for a little while before actually settling on their final decision. So instead of having someone ask them, what do you want to do um, for like a major event or planning a major thing um, instead of saying okay I want to like pick that wedding dress or that wedding dress um, I mentioned in a previous video my niece is getting married right so if my niece is a prudent person she would want to like try on all the dresses but then make a decision later that's part of prudence so for these major decisions instead of being put on the spot and feeling like you're you're kind of holding back the entire team or your family. Instead, get into the habit of recognizing that your signature strength is prudence and just tell everyone that you're gonna take a couple of days to think about it, especially for major decisions. You don't wanna go out there and just buy a car um, without sitting and pondering whether that car is the best decision for you. And so 
when you tell everyone that you're going to take a couple of days to think about it though uh, you really should return back to those decisions and what we're going to be doing is tracking the decisions that you have put off for a few days so that way you can think about it and this is where this sheet is going to come into play you know, my plans all center around vacations and, you know, like family events and also like work, but I was really struggling to come up with things. Again, I'm not a prudent person. I pretty much make decisions in the moment. Um, but the way that this intervention works, or at least theoretically, is that when you have a major, major decision to make, you will put it down on a sticky note or on a sticker like I did here. Um, again, I'm using stickers and a silicone release paper. Uh, set up, but you can certainly just do this on a sticky note. Um, but I just find that if I write it on a sticker, I'm much more likely to put the sticker into my planner. Um, and so there's the psychological benefit of like having it on a more per permanent system instead of just on a sticky note that you could just pull out of your planner and throw away. So here I'm going to list out some of the major decisions that I have to make. Now for someone who is prudent, I really think that uh, one of the the pros is that you will take time to think about it, but one of the cons is that you will take too much time to think about it. And so for each of these decisions, um, really you should be working on setting a deadline for these things. Um, the decision could be yes to doing something, no to doing something, choosing between multiple options, or deciding to delay the decision until a further date. So to give you um, my examples here. This vacation for February, we are in the month of February right now. This decision has to be made fairly quickly. And so as a major decision, um, if I and my husband are sitting down to talk about vacations, um, I really want to give us as a couple a timeline. Like we want to be able to make this decision in the next couple of days or weeks, N not weeks, in the next couple of days, we have to make a decision, right? So between now and the end of the weekend on Sunday, we need to make a decision on what our vacation for February will be. Here is our anniversary dinner. We actually, um, our anniversary is February 12th. And so again, this has to be a pretty quick decision. These two are quick decisions. Go ahead and set like a loose deadline Saturday Sunday these two need to have a decision made and so one of the things that you could do and I might do this in pencil is write in that this is going to be due and I need the date uh, December 6th it's December oh my goodness uh, February 6th and then right here this third one it says decide on plan for my text test banks um, this is actually something I'm planning to do in the summer so here my decision is actually to delay it until summer Right? And I'll just leave it on here until summer comes around and then I'll, I'll know that this has been a major decision that I've kind of left pending. Um, and in fact, I would take this and move it to the back and this could be kind of like a holding pattern for all of the decisions that I've deferred for a later date. And then here for summer vacation, again, this could be a little bit later and so I can again defer this until summer and again, I can move this to the back. Um, and so I have four major decisions to make about like what I need to do for test banks, our summer vacation, our anniversary dinner, and then our February vacation. But of these decisions, the, of those four decisions, two really have to be made pretty quickly. And so in terms of using and enhancing prudence, what I'm going to do is instead of saying today I need to make a decision for these things, I'll give myself time to think about them. Um, but I also don't want to give myself too much time to think about them. And so I've gone ahead and set a deadline uh, for this weekend to make a decision on both of these things. Um, and so that's just kind of how it works. I've written them on this sticker um, and it's on the silicone release paper that is just peeling up like crazy but once I make the decision I can actually move this sticker into my planner um, and I just plop it right down on the date that I made the decision um, and pat myself on the back for being able to make a decision within a fairly short amount of time for some major decisions right so again prudence is all about m making decisions without assuming undue risk. Um, and so taking the time and giving yourself a pause to be able to make time to make these decisions um, is important for someone who has prudence or needs prudence or wants to enhance prudence. Um, but it also is something where we don't want to fall into the trap of delaying decisions so far that the decision gets made for us. And so by setting a time frame of, I like to think of like a two day time frame, either a two day time frame or a time frame of two months, then we are able to track both the short term decisions that we need to make within the week or within the next couple of days, as well as the major decisions that we can kind of put off for a little bit. But we don't want to, for example, have a decision like buying a brand new car 
or like replacing a car and then delay that decision for so long um, and, and be so cautious that the car that we are currently using breaks down in the meantime while we're making the decision. So on one hand, prudence is great for delaying decisions that could hurt us, but also prudence could have that like double-edged sword where we've taken it too long and then the decision is kind of made for us. And so by implementing a system where you can see exactly when things get on your list, the major decisions are put onto your task list and also making sure that you move things off by making decisions on them, then you're able to, you know, be in control of the decisions that you've made instead of having the decisions made for you. And lastly, as I'm talking through all this, I've kind of talked about two different interventions for what we're gonna be doing in our planner. Um, but at a life level, one of the things for prudence is that a lot of people who don't have the characteristic of prudence, including me, as I mentioned, prudence is number 20 for me, um, people who don't have a lot of patience for like delayed decisions can sometimes be very like, they can be very pressuring to have you make a decision very quickly. And so one of the habits, life habits, that I think a prudent person should develop if prudence is your signature strength, uh, really learn how to tell people that you're going to make a decision, but you need just a little bit of time to ponder it. And again, I like to use a two-day time frame. So if you are going to take a 48-hour period or one day or two days to think about it, and you're going to tell someone else, let me sleep on it, I'll give you a decision tomorrow. This is one of the things where as you implement this system into your planner, you need to go back and actually make these decisions. So instead of saying, I'm gonna think about the vacation for February, give you a decision tomorrow, but then continue to delay it, then you're, you're falling into, again, the trap like the, the double-edged sword of prudence where you delay the decision too long and then it's gonna be March, okay? So again, at a life level, one of the things that you should do is get comfortable with telling people that you need to delay a decision, but also make sure that you're circling back around and giving them your final decision um, in a in an appropriate time frame instead of waiting weeks and weeks and weeks for it. So I hope this series uh, is going to be helpful for all of us, me included, because I am learning about character strengths that are not my strengths um, and how I can improve it. I would love to be able to implement some of these systems into my own planning. And so I hope that you can as well. Um, let me know in the comments if you feel like this worked out um, in terms of how I presented this information. I feel like, you know, in terms of putting together this information for a character strength that is not a top strength of mine, it's very difficult to kind of like, I guess, wrap my mind around it. Um, and I'm trying to do like more demo, um, like these are actual things that we we I personally need to do um, but also some of these things are like I'm kind of talking them out in the moment again I'm not a prudent person and so I'm kind of on the fly winging some of it that probably like for a prudent person you're probably cringing right now but I do kind of like free flow some of it um, and so I just want some feedback I guess on like whether this was helpful to you and whether you feel like the format of this where I'm talking through like planner tips as well as interventions for positive psychology and then life tips uh, is helpful to you. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Please do leave me a comment. Um, I'm excited about doing this series, but I don't know if other people are, so feedback would be awesome. And until the next video, we're going to be exploring 23 other character strengths, so there's a lot left to talk about. Uh, but until the next video, I will see you later. Bye!